so let's talk about rotational inertia so what is inertia inertia is basically the tendency of the body to resist its motion so inertia depends on mass what is happening there is that eh, if you have got um, an object which is here okay let's say this object has got the mass of 2 kgs then you have another object or in this case let me just use in anyway let me use the same thing uh, I'll have another object then this object will have 10 kgs so the inertia gets bigger as the mass gets bigger so the basic idea behind inertia is that inertia is given by the mass times the radius okay so let's assume to say the radius of this is the same let's say the radius here is um 3 meters then here is also 3 meters meaning that inertia for the first object is going to be 2 times 3 which is 6 now since there is mass times r we can see that mass is in kgs then radius is in meter but since it is or it is supposed to be mass times r squared that is the formula for inertia that is the general formula so it's going to be meter squared then here is going to be inertia is equal to uh, 10 times 3 which is going to be 30 so as we can see the object with a bigger mass tend to have um, greater inertia so what we can conclude there is that inertia depends on mass so inertia is direct proportion to mass as the mass gets bigger inertia will also go up so what are we saying we are saying that if uh, the mass goes up inertia goes up as well if the mass goes down inertia will go down now we are saying that it is the tendency of the body to resist its motion let's assume to say you are moving in a car then the car um, or let's say you are moving at a very high speed in a car then the driver applies brakes from nowhere what you're going to discover is that eh, you're going to go forward backward at the same time you go again forward and then backward then after some time you come back to your original position so what makes you to to go back to the original position is uh, inertia that is just basically the tendency of the body to resist its motion now when you're talking about rotation work and um, rotation work energy and momentum we need to be familiar with what inertia is so now we need to know that eh, inertia can be given uh, by formulas depending on the shape and the size of an object so in most cases you are going to be given the formula for inertia but what you should know is that eh, the general formula for inertia is mr squared at the same time what you should know is that eh, if they ask you the inertia of uh, the disk it is half mr squared then inertia of the body maybe inertia of the person is given by mr squared there is no half now i'm going to give you about four shapes which you you need to be familiar with but it's not even important always when they ask you this question they are going to to tell you the formula they're going to give you actually so let's say we're talking about um a disk so if you have got a disk so let's assume that that is our disk now this disk 
that is the point of uh, axis. So inertia of the disk is always given by half m r squared. Then now let's say you have got a sphere. So if you have got a sphere like this, not really this, but this. If this is a solid sphere, so inertia of the solid sphere is given by 2 over 5 mr squared. Then there is what we call solid cylinder. I can also give you another solid cylinder. Let's say we have got a cylinder. Okay. So here is my cylinder. So the radius is there. So inertia of the disk and the cylinder is the same. So inertia of the cylinder is going to be mr squared. Now you're going to be given the formulas always. So but what we need to know is that the inertia of the disk is given by half mr squared. If they ask about the solid sphere is 2 over 5 mr squared then the cylinder and um, the disk is the same. Then if they ask you about um, the inertia of the solid mass, if you have got an object which has got, which is just, the mass is just considered on one part, like this, then inertia in that case is m r squared. So that's why I said the inertia of the person, since the mass is just considered on one part, so the inertia of the person is m r squared. Now that we know that uh, inertia is given by m r squared, and we have got different uh, types of shapes and different formulas, let's see how we can solve some questions under the same topic. So I've got my first question here, which is um, which is saying a heavy solid metal wheel has a moment of inertia of two two thousand or two hundred and fifty kg meter squared, what is the needed torque to produce an acceleration of three lard per second squared? I believe we talked about torque. We say torque is given by FR. Another formula for torque we said it is inertia times the angular acceleration. Now in this case we want to find torque. Okay? and we have been given the inertia we also have the the acceleration so i can use this formula to find the torque so meaning that torque will be the inertia is 250 times the acceleration is 3 so torque will be 250 times 3 which is going to be a 750 now um, the SI unit for torque is Newton meter. Why are we saying Newton meter? Um, the force here is in Newton, R is in uh, meters. So now, even if you drive this one, this formula, you end up having the same units, Newton meter. Okay, now let's have the next question. The question is uh, a, a 1.5 kg grinding stone of 8 centimeters radius is turning at 130 lard per second the driving motor is switched off and the axe is pressed tangentially against the grind uh, the grinding stone with a force of 2 newton how long will it take or how long will it uh, the grinding stone to, to to stop how long will it take the grinding stone to stop yeah that was supposed to be how long will it take for the grinding stone to come to stop. Anyway, so now let's come up with data. I believe data is going to help us to, to know the formula which we are going to use. So we have got the mass of 1.5 kgs. The radius, it is uh, 8 centimeters. We divide by 100, 0 0.08 meters. We have our initial velocity, our initial angular velocity to be 130 lard per second. 
Now it was switched off, meaning that the final was zero. The final angular velocity is zero large per second. What else do we know? Now the force was acting against. Against meaning the force is is negative. So I've got the force of two is going to be negative two newton because it was acting against. Okay, so the question is one to find time. Generally speaking, here we can only use this formula to find time. I believe so. Because I can see that I have my final velocity, I have my initial velocity, then I don't have the final. I I I don't have the angular velocity, but I do have the the radius and the mass. I can find the inertia. I can find the angular velocity. What did we say? We said that torque. We we'll start from torque, where we said um, torque is given by the inertia times the angular acceleration. Okay, but we also know that another formula for torque is the force times the r. I have the force, I have the r. Therefore, I can replace this with what I have here. Now I also know that inertia. We are talking about um, inertia of the disc, grinding stone. Okay, so grinding stone meaning we are going to be talking about the inertia of the disc. But initially, if they ask you in your test or exam, they are going to give you to say, given that the the inertia of the grinding stone is uh, half m r squared. So you don't have to. To master the, f the formulas of uh, inertia because they are, they are going to give you but what you need to know is in case they don't give you you should know that the grinding stone the inertia is half mr squared then again the inertia of um, the disc is um, half mr squared the inertia of the person is just mr squared the inertia of the solid sphere is 2 over 5 mr squared. Now let's go ahead and solve this. So we have got inertia, I'm going to replace inertia with half mr squared times angular acceleration. Why I'm doing this? Because I know the mass, I know the, the ledgers, I know the, the force. I can now find the, the angular acceleration. But what I'm going to do is I'm going to do times 2 both sides so that I get rid of half. So it's going to be 2 fr is equal to m r squared times this. I will divide both sides by m r squared here m r squared. What I'm trying to do here, I'm trying to make the alpha as a subject of formula. So I'll have 2 f r divided by m r squared. We can here I see that we have got r on top and r down. So I would mean with 1 r. Therefore, my acceleration in this case will be, my angular acceleration will be 2F then divided by MR. Let's, let's plug in the values. Remember it, the force was acting against, so it is negative. And we can here see that it's making sense. Because it was turned off, meaning it was decelerating. So we expect to have... Uh, angular acceleration to be negative because it was decelerating. So it's going to be 2 times negative 2 divided by the mass is 1.5 times times um, the R which is 0 0.08. So my angular acceleration will be on top is negative 4. So neg 4 divided by 1.5 times 0 0.08 so I'm getting my angular acceleration to be negative 33.33 lat per second squared now in a case where you don't know how to punch this dialect what you can do is uh, you can find this separately and find this separate and then divide it. 
but if you know what you can do is you can just say negative 4 divided by then you open the brackets on your calculator put 1.5 times 0 0.08 then close the brackets the answer so you get that one now we can go ahead and find from the formula from our formula here on top which is in lead we have now the angular acceleration we want to find the time so we can sh we can make t as a subject of formula whereby we can shift this alpha to the other side it's going to be like this I divide both side by alpha both side by alpha t will be equal to the alpha final alpha initial divided by alpha Mm, th this is not alpha it's omega so the omega final minus omega initial divided by alpha yeah angular acceleration is alpha and angular velocity is omega now i can see that my t will be equal to the final is zero the initial is um 130 divided by negative 33 0.33 so using my calculator i'm finding that the time is um 3.3.9 i'm getting 3.9 seconds to be my time so it will take about 3.9 seconds if you can round it off and say it's four seconds to take about four seconds or 3.9 seconds for this grinding stone tool come to stop so this is the basic idea behind um, inertia